Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Diablo 4. In this episode we are going to be getting our revenge glyph all the way up to rank 15. So it's going to expand in radius and we're going to get the benefit of dealing thorns damage to an enemy. It increases all damage it takes uh, up to 8%. It's not a huge benefit but it is going to be nice. Um, ultimately the big thing we get from this is it gives us an increased physical damage and an increase in armor. Um, so it's quite nice. Quite nice. It's not like super ultra amazing. Um, we could end up swapping it in up here potentially to get uh, more damage reduction from bleeding enemies. That might actually be a really smart choice. Except if we do that we'll need to reallocate some of our uh, glyph points. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, I've had a look at what I want to do with our Paragon board going forwards. Uh, we're going to come across here, we're going to do some of these, we're going to come get this uh, pillage one over here. Um, but next, we're pushing in this way, uh, and we're going to be uh, building some attachments over that side. Let's turn the light on, because it's getting a little bit dark outside. And we're going to hop in and we're going to do another tier 31. We're just going to keep uh, keep pushing at about this level. Um, we do have obviously 32 and a 35 ready to go, uh, but those don't need to happen right this moment. Uh, let's move that down and do we want backstabbers making us vulnerable? Mm, no. Armor breakers? Armor breakers could be fine. We've got a decent amount of armor. So we'll head across to the hallowed ossuary. So once we're done with Revenge, we're going to um, take our Blood Letter 1 and start boosting that up. And that's also going to be good for our damage output and progression. Right, we need Animus Carriers, and there is one just around the corner already. Now with armor breakers, we're likely to be taking more casual damage from stuff. So we do want to be a little bit careful with just running straight into the middle of mobs. Uh, especially those that are likely to explode uh, with physical damage. Right, we're going to go extra dexterity or extra intelligence. I think extra dexterity, dexterity, strength, willpower and come down that way. And from the looks of it, we have Poison Dodge. Let's get some decent damage reduction in on this. Bloated Corpse Fiends, they are all destroyed. So we should continue making good progress on our level. I think our pacing is absolutely fine at this stage. They've done a good... Uh, good job of improving the late game pacing. Um, I know some of it's down to the fact we've got Mother's Blessing right now. Um, honestly, I'm fine with that. Um, having it as a special event um, is kind of nice. It encourages people to like try other characters out. Uh, we're just, we're using it as a bit of an opportunity to just, just get further. And as a, as a casual player um, who's doing like one or uh, yeah, one hour a day when I can manage it. Um, it means I might actually reach level 90 before the season's out, which is quite nice. Okay, we're going to have to come back this way to drop off the animus, so let's just keep moving and looking for the carriers. Yeah, we'll get our focus on this guy and his friends. There is quite a lot of damage that's coming in here. Right, got them both with a big thorns explosion. Okay, next animus carrier right here. Let's dodge on to get some poison from that uh, potion. About the only time we're ever actually going to have that be used in an offensive capacity rather than just, hey, it's amusing. We're crapping green as we jump around. 
Another animus carrier just here. I like that he put the uh, uh, the frost wall down and then immediately ran away from it. So this is um, this is a, a tier thirty one dungeon. Um, when we gain level, uh, we should be in a position to do uh, tier thirty twos and still get a good amount of XP. I think there's a animus carrier down to the uh, southwest here. Let's have a look. We definitely feel strong enough that we can move up, um, so that's really nice. And of course, the further we push into the next Paragon board, the uh, the stronger we're going to be. Uh, the next Paragon board, uh, we're actually going to get Poison Resist on it, which is kind of amusing because it's like the one that we don't need. Um, but it's going to give us the flexibility to rework our equipment, uh, which is very nice. I have hunted these wretched creatures for as long okay. as I've been able Let's to look for the bloodstone. I was going to say let's uh, let's go left first, but seeing as everyone was immediately ready to go on the side. Hey, protection shrine. You know what? Let's grab it. Let's grab it and let's hurry on through because we can we can be reckless with this. Hunt them down. Do not let my death be That is a, another Paragon point. We'll have a look at all the equipment and stuff. It's dropped at this point in down here. Just step into the area and explode on them. It's really satisfying. Really, really satisfying. Now, I don't know how tough we're going to need to be to take on Varshan at this level. Um, but I think I'd rather over level than um, than under level because we are a hardcore character. It's exactly the same with uh, Grigoire. Better to overdo it than underdo it. And actually, it looks like the thing we need is just uh, just down here. But you know what? If he's decided he's going to run all the way over there, I'm going to grab this. Will you just stop doing stuff near me? Fine. Let him kill himself with the thorns. We'll ignore him and just push on past. Okay, Blood Bishop we fought many times before. Half dead already. Oh my god, the thorns! The thorns! That was. Mwah, that was Chef's Kiss delicious. I love that so much. Okay. Points going in to revenge. Nice. The radius size is at max. We can keep putting it up until it's ranked 21. Um, but now we're going to get much bigger benefit uh, from upgrading our other ones, such as Blood Feeder. So back to town we go. We'll have a quick look at the items. probably hop in for another dungeon. Now, there is going to be a, um, a hell tide during this episode. Uh, probably about half an hour in, I think. Uh, we can just salvage this up. That's just a sacred. That's just a sacred. And I'm not conceptually against this, 
it's got lightning resist on in which um in fact look looking at this on a purely practical level it's got lightning resist reasonable roll on it like that healing received we can re-roll that into cold resist we are already 22 percent over the top on our poison resist so this is going to be a benefit for us to switch across to really is as long as we can re-roll that healing resist into cold resist so this is a nice helmet for us to keep we're going to obviously uh, replace the uh, the imprint on it and we need to use acid and, and stuff but uh how many forgotten souls have we got? We've probably got enough that we can. We've got three, so we could re-roll it once. Maybe we would get the cold resist. We could also just pop out one of those lightning resists and swap them for, for cold resist that way. So uh let's go do enchanting. So, healing received, we don't care about. Mm, don't really care about either of those. For the moment, basic skill attack speed will have to do. Um, but we want to we want to change that. Definitely want to change that. Let's use the cleansing acid on this. Uh, we want two divinity and uh, one ferocity. And what I'll do is I'll upgrade it a few times ahead of time. And in fact, we can even imprint it ahead of time. So we had the 0.9% and we had the 1%. I think it's good enough that we'll, we'll put the 1% on it. So now it's just about... Just about the upgrading and adding a socket, and then we're waiting until we can re-roll it. Not bad. Fifty-one percent lightning resist on it. Look at that. So our cold resist is low. We are 38%. Yeah, we can definitely swap these over. Let's uh, let's do some jiggery pokery. Uh, so we need to head back to the jeweler. I, I love this um, constant feeling of progression with your items. Like even even minor upgrades are still upgrades. All right, so add that socket. We're going to unsocket this. Uh, we don't have enough parts to, not even close, uh, to do a proper emerald bit. So let's unsocket that. And yeah, we want cold. So we'll salvage this up. And that is reasonable. I'd say that's reasonable. Like, we still obviously want to have another resistance on our helmet. Um, especially instead of that basic attack speed, because that's that's just a bit pants. But it's it's more default armor. Um, it's more resistance in total. It's, it's good for our survivability. So this is going under the hammer. And we are heading back into dungeons. So we've got tier 31, we've got tier 31, let's do the tier 32. Probably should have read what the affixes were for it, but I'm sure we'll be fine.
so we are a little bit ahead with our uh, progress, but it is a tiny bit ahead. Oh, right, we've got explaining guys. Mm, that's going to be a bit painful. Not a problem though. We should um, we should gain the level in the middle of this. Uh... Let's get the pristine key from the copper. Uh, in the middle of this dungeon, we'll uh, we'll go up to seventy six. So it doesn't matter that we're punching a little bit ahead. That could have been a bit painful getting knocked back into an explosion. Not something I'm keen on having lots of. And a lot of these guys are actually exploding on us. Or trying to explode on us, I should say. That does seem to be the biggest threat, though, is keeping the explosions in a manageable fashion. Uh, back up a little. Because there is a lot of guys, but... At the same time, if we can thin them out properly, the fight becomes a lot easier to manage. Okay. Looking for that memorial gate. Little bit of uh, amethyst fragments in there. These guys are going to have some some big wallops. Just there, so let's drink a little bit before we move on into the catacombs. Slaying the blasphemist once again. We've done this before. Um, it's very much a rinse and repeat, but that's part of the gameplay cycle. I am still hoping that we're going to find a razor plate at some point. Because our build does kind of rely on it as a concept. Right, there is the 76. So this point goes into strength there. Okay, he's gone. We'll try and keep the damage going on. God, this guy's got such a big barrier. Still not seen any of the blasphemists yet, though. Uh oh, blood seekers. Okay, let's back up somewhere a bit safe. Here they come. Woo! There's actually three of them. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. We are a little bit frozen, but it's fine. He says. I'm not entirely sure if he believes that. Whoa. 
Hey, why are we not attacking? Like, this guy is vampiric. Got him. Okay. We, we managed that quite well. Definitely our cold resist is our struggle. Uh, one of the reasons why we're going to move across into the next um, Paragon board is there's a section in there for um, crowd control uh, duration reduction. Uh, so we can build, uh, like build some of that into our survivability. And I think that's it's going to be important for us to get that sooner rather than later because there's nothing worse than being stuck, unable to actually act. Hey, there's one of the blasphemists. Right. Not keen on the amount of um, cold that these guys are out putting in. Also not keen on the amount of damage reduction they're playing with. Okay, well, we've killed all your friends. We may as well kill you as well. And then we'll head back round. I definitely need to stop being quite as reckless. Like, I'm doing a lot of charging in when it's not the smart move. Pulling mobs carefully is the smart move at this point. Trying to figure out where the damage reduction is coming from is the smart move. Targeting the mobs at range with Hemomancy is the smart move. Getting right in the middle of them is not the smart move. It is fun, but it's going to get me killed if I keep doing it. There's another Blasphemist. We'll kill the Dread Knight. We'll kill the friends around here. Okay. Doing a good job. Managing the aggro. There's this guy. Oh, it's another cold one. Of course it is. Okay. Definitely the right time to become unstoppable. Ain't got time to be dealing with any of uh, any of that. Kill the ads, then we'll focus on him. There we go. Oh, what do you know? Even more for us to kill. Okay, we'll, we'll swing round. So yeah, I am going to want to look um, like critically at where we've got our revenge uh, glyph because the little bit of armor that we're getting isn't as relevant now as it was when we started out. And the plus the strength we're getting, it's it's going to be useful for certain. But it might be it might not be useful enough for us to say actually yeah, we want to be putting the revenge glyph there. We might want more damage reduction from uh, one of the other sections instead. That's the kind of um, critical analysis that I need to be uh, doing with the glyphs as we get later in. Okay, he's gonna go. There we go. Doesn't matter that he exploded. Ancestral Ring. Cool. So, 
Blood Feeder. Currently rank two. Now rank three. Now rank four. Almost rank five. Look at that. Now the uh, the Hell Tide is going to begin in like seven minutes. So what I might do is I might head to um, Blood Harvest and do some stuff over there. But let's have a look at what we got in the consumables. Hey, we got our first bit of Distilled Fear. Look at that. We need nine of them in order to enter a Glacial Fisher. So that's going to be a while before we get that, but we have got our first one. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, the into the blacksmith. Whatever you need. What have we got? Bit of damage reduction. We don't care much about it. So this is just going to go. Damage reduction from distant enemies. Mm. Damage reduction while injured. It's a low roll. Damage reduction while fortified. Eh. Honestly, I think our current one is going to be the best, and we'll re-roll the total armor on it at some point, but our current one is great. Is this is not going to outdo our new helmet, especially once we get some cold resist on it. How about this? Okay. Critical strike chance is a bit low, but fine. Damage over time, that's good roll. Damage to bleeding enemies is very low. Damage while berserking is very low. It, all in all, even though it is a Ring of Berserk Fury, it's not good enough for us to actually switch across to. How about this axe? Damage to healthy enemies. Like it. Critical strike damage. I like it. Overpower damage. We could re-roll that. Vulnerable damage is fine. It's a bit low. Damage to slowed enemies. Yeah. Overall... I want them. I'd wanted to have at least one good roll, I think, in order to switch over to it. And none of them are good. But under the hammer, you go. Thirty-five percent chance to maximum fortify whenever you do direct damage. Oh, that's fun. But I like that it uh, it pairs with the seven point seven percent damage reduction while fortified. That's actually a really good thing because we are often fortified. And it does have it does have poison resist on it. And it's a reasonable role for the poison resist, actually, but overall we would need to do a lot more work on it, I think. I so under the hammer it goes. Next, lucky hit chance up, that's nice. But the rest of it is not. So under the hammer it goes. And the breastplate, nah. So from that, we didn't get any Forgotten Souls. All right, we have four minutes before we're gonna need to go to the Helltide. So let's go slay some vampires. And going around the hell type really is um, because we need to get those cinders. We have a, a lot that, that we need to to do. And when I say need to do, I mean for the season journey, not just like out of pride or anything like that. Oh my god, these mobs are going to die so quickly. Comparative. To what we've been fighting. Big lot of diamond fragments. Oh, 
how are we doing for favors? We're up to four favors. Uh, you know what? We'll uh, we'll do the event while we're here as well, because this won't take long, and they're going to come towards us. So many blood lures, we're going to be able to summon the council. We're going to end up with blood seekers following us in a moment. So I'm standing in place and attacking like this because Hemomancy will trigger I uh, and will kill stuff at range, so it's it's well worth doing it. Okay, let's um let's carry on looking for stuff we can do in the area. I see a vampiric siphon. This is definitely a way to get attention. Alright, Helltide is there. So we're going to finish up a bit in here. Vampires are hunting us. Cool. That's that's getting painful enough that we can step out. Ah, we've got blood seekers. That's what I wanted. Let's not stand in the cold. Oh, they're only level 75. These guys aren't even aren't even a threat. I mean, they're, of course they're a threat, but they're not. They're not a potent threat. Okay, let's... Let's head back to town. We'll just grab that blood. I don't have enough fuel. We'll just clear our inventory out, and then we're going to go to the Blood Harvest. Uh, not the Blood Harvest, the Helltide. This should be a relatively quick salvage up. My eyes can only watch so much. My skill is unmatched. You'll see. Okay. Uh, it's not great rolls. Damage reduction while injured. Reduced crowd control. Actually... This is it's pretty good, other than the fact it doesn't have any resistances on. We could re-roll like maximum life. But it's something that I would have considered if we didn't already have something good. And yeah, shared misery, that can just go. So, where are we heading? Oh, actually. Part of it is in this area. That's really amusing. Okay. Let's. Let's head over here. I'm going to pull up my separate map because there is going to be a thing of mysteries down here. Uh, but one of the things we want for the season journey is open multiple torture gifts during a single hell tide. So we want to keep doing lots and lots of those. I can't do that here. And actually, 
for this area. Let's go demon slaying. Seems appropriate. I'm out of fury. This still counts as not the uh, the hell tide, but the blood harvest. Right, let's let's get out and get into the hell tide proper. There we go. So this is what we need. Now, opening multiple chests um, will be good for us. Uh, we don't just need to go for like the torture gift of mysteries, um, but the bigger thing, uh, the bigger the thing we go for, the better the rewards are going to be. So I think going for the torture gift of mysteries um, makes a lot of sense. just always going to be a question of whether we can get enough quickly enough. It took so long to open. Hey, there was a screaming hell vein right there. I totally saw it. I even clicked on it. There's one. They're important because you get um, lots of cinders out of them, much like the uh, chests. I'm not ready yet. Okay, on this side, big roof. together and focus on the shaman again in areas like this we're going to want to um, look at events where possible up to 55 we're making good progress I'd say actually Given we've only been in here for a very short period of time. So for the, uh, for the Gifts of Mystery, um, of course we need 250. Uh, you do sometimes get Living Steel from other ones, so we don't specifically need to go for the Living Steel chest. Don't have enough fury. I must wait. Ooh, is it going to be... Chonky! So we've got a Helltide Assassin in here, actually. Well, that's annoying that he's got that darkened area. The thorns damage just taking him out. That is stonking. We are definitely a strong character. It's also really interesting to see like the the different um, mechanics that he's using because normally we would just run away. Okay, he's only got two segments left. I wonder if we're going to get anything worthwhile from him. Almost got him down. Yeah, 
quite a few things. That felt worthwhile. It did take a long time, so in terms of like raw cinders, it's probably not the most efficient, but I'm out of fury. I'm not ready yet. Felt like there was um there was enough loot in it that uh I wouldn't wouldn't be hard done by now the torture gift of uh, mysteries is actually down below us down in there so let's let's mark it I must wait. We'll try try and get up to that 250 quickly That's going to mean the screaming hell veins and everything. Oh, and we're going to be able to do Paragon points. I might wait until we're done in the hell tide to do that, though. Because we're under a time pressure to get these. I must walk. Cinders. We hop down in here. Is this kind of leaving the area? No, it's not. It's just a different part of it. But it's not particularly useful for us to be down here. So, up we go. Get on the old horse. And we'll ride around till we find the next batch of mobs. Okay, 122. Not bad. We are about halfway to our first tortured gift. Unless we go for smaller ones, but I'm not ready yet. Mysteries is really where the where the I big money's at. Fury. Okay, that felt pretty profitable. Up to 147. Let's keep on this northern side. And another little ore vein. Slightly to the north. I'm not ready yet. Okay, grab all of those bits. I did see there was one more cinder, but I wanted to get this chest before I completely forget about it. We're up to 191, so we can almost, almost head across and do it. And luckily, the, uh, the spawns are pretty nice and quick and thick in this area. I'm still flabbergasted that we uh, we took out the butcher in the last episode while being harassed by other mobs as well. I must wait. Hey, bit of Galavine. We are obviously looking out for uh, Fiend Roses as well, uh, but Cinders are really the, the key bit because we need so many of them. Now, some of the uh, cinders I'll, of course, be doing on this character. Some I'll be doing on the softcore character with my brother on Mondays. So we're not going to need to grind all thousand of them out over here. Right, let's head back to that chest. We 
we should grab the last there we go the last that we needed on the way Efficient by killing stuff as we go. Especially when it's all vulnerable like that. We're going to have over delivered. It's not a problem in itself. I must wait. So I'm going to need to check the map as well for where the second chest is because I always forget. Like the the first one is relatively easy. The second one I always forget. chests in here so we'll get all the bits from those as well we are here at our destination let's open it up good bits of XP and a selection of items and a bit of living steel exactly like I thought and we got some fiend roses out of it, actually. So that's really handy. Okay. While that guy is dying, let me just reposition my my map. We're going down... Oh, it's just moved. We're going down here for the second one. That's always the danger. The map will move because uh, every uh, every 15 minutes or so things can change so if you're really efficient you can open up a hell of a lot of stuff during a single session uh, so we're going to fight our way down towards the second gift now we've only got um, about 13 minutes left on on this episode so I don't know if we're going to have time, but we'll we'll do what we can. If we can get a second one, it'd be really nice. If not, we'll just open up whatever we can at the end. Oh, come on, game. Load me in. To a good start in this area. It's a nice selection. Already up to sixty six. Oh, my word, look at how many up to ninety. That was that was a proper explosion. Protection shrine is probably not necessary. We'll grab these. And there is the event up here, but I don't think this one's going to be efficient enough for us to warrant doing it. Ooh, hello. Nice group of elites. That is gonna be good. 115. Give me more like that, that's what I say. Okay, 125, we are halfway there. Now 
Now, in terms of, like, the uh, season journey, uh, we need to get the Cindy's. Uh, so that's one side of it. We need to open a whole bunch of chests. So we could go for lots of, like, little chests, uh, like the one just up here. But I think we've got more chance of getting good items and more of them. We're certainly getting more experience by going for the bigger chests. Last wave shrine. Oh, good. That's bad. Almost overextended there. Too eager to get in the middle of it. We got frozen. Don't want to open that. Uh, we got frozen and stuck in a really bad place. Managed to get away, thankfully. And I think some of it is probably down to that damage reduction while injured that we have. There's a lot of things that go towards making this character survivable. That looks like it might be a worthwhile event. Let's uh, have a little look across at this. We've got nine minutes. Um, we might get lucky with this. The guys over the edge, they are so frustrating. I must wait. What I want to do is kind of like get this guy killed and then have everyone attack me while I'm really close to the other to the main target. That's you gone. We've got one up here. Not ready yet. Oh, almost got him. Hey, somehow. Somehow we did enough, it must have been thorns. Well, we've got a lot, a lot of cinders to just grab from the nearby area. 205. We just need another 45. Definitely a good time to find a green bow, is that? I must wait. I'm out of fury. Okay, more guys up here than I was expecting. Let's uh, start heading towards that chest. Almost enough. One more will do it. There it is. Okay, let's ride. Because we don't have time to do any more than this. immediately near us just so we don't get interrupted too much there we go a whole bunch of things and some more living steel okay what we'll do is we'll pop back to town have a very quick look through our items and put our paragon board on so our next paragon board is going to be uh, across to the left and it is the one that has hemorrhage on it
And we want it to be not that way round. We want it to be this way round. So, as I said, we've got poison resist just down here. We can head down, grab that. That's going to give us just a little bit of extra um, survivability when uh, when we end up re-rolling our resists on our items. Uh, but this is uh, this is going to give us quite a big amount of damage output because 24% uh, bonus bleeding damage. It's huge. The requirements on this board are absolutely stonk stonkingly high. So most of them we're not really going to see anything on. Um, but that's that's by the by. So what have we got in terms of things we got out of that? 28 Forgotten Souls. That is enough for us to do the upgrade on our weapon that we wanted to do. And we could do some re-rolls on our items. So, much. so I'm going to salvage up stuff that's no real use to us. Uh, this is... Critical strike damage is nice. Vulnerable damage is nice. Damage over time is nice. Basic skill damage is so-so. Eh, but each of these is like nice rolls that they have. So I think we'll actually switch across to this. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna switch across to this. And probably re-roll something on that, but. Let's very quickly just do the upgrade on our weapon before I forget. Uh, we're going to want to upgrade this as well. So we're getting the, the maximum benefit from it. We can salvage that old one up. Must remember to imprint this. Got to, in fact, so I don't forget. Let's take it down there. This can just go because it's sacred. We want to extract this, or just replace it, actually. So our current one does damage to injured enemies, basic skill, and damage over time, and a bit of critical damage. The current one, uh, sorry, the new one would do basic skill, which is fine, that's an improvement. Damage to close, which is great. And damage to bleeding, which is alright, because most things will be bleeding. So yeah, we're going to swap that in, and we're going to upgrade this as well. One of my so you can get salvaged up in fact. Let's I can't use that. Put those. Salvage this. And that is that is more damage as well being done, so really like it. Uh, we're gonna just salvage these trousers up. It is a slightly higher item power, so let's let's be reasonable and have a look at what it's got. It's got lightning resist and shadow resist, but they're both they're both not spectacular rolls. The berserking duration is nice, but I like the damage reduction while injured that we've got at the moment. So we'll salvage them. Uh, these boots are just sacred mm, so they can go. Good salvage. Ancestral helm. What have we got? Poison resist. Lightning resist. The lightning resist is all right. Our current one is better. Lucky hit while we have a barrier. We don't have a barrier. This can just go under the hammer. And these boots are just sacred, so they can go as well. All right. I think we just need to finish off the imprinting, and we're good to go. So thank you very much for coming along, everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. We're going to put the good imprint on this, uh, and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time just doing some enchanting off camera. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Diablo 4. See you soon.